In this video, I paint Hermione Granger for a Harry Potter miniatures adventure game. Hello to all you muggles in the bits brood. This is my second Harry Potter paint tutorial video. And in this video, I'm going to be painting Hermione Granger. So there's a couple of um, features on Hermione that are very similar to Harry and Ron. But I've tried to um, just paint uh, slightly different. And there's lots of other um, features on her as well that you'll see that are painted slightly different as well. So I thought she'd warrant a separate video from the other two. Again, I'm just painting in like a sort of basic tabletop standard. And um, these videos are normally aimed at more of the sort of newer painters or people who just want to get the miniatures on the table quickly. So um, I hope you guys do find this video useful. If you are new to this channel and you like everything um, miniature wargaming, especially miniature painting, conversion videos, bat reps, etc., and we cover a wide variety of games now, and then do hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And before we begin, as always, a massive shout out to all our Patreons. Um, you guys are awesome, and you help us keep doing what we do, and we manage to improve the quality on our videos thanks to the money we raised from our Patreons. And if you're interested in what um, becoming a Patreon is all about, then there is a link down below and you can check out all the rewards and such down there. So, let's just get straight into this. Okay, so here we have the Hermione miniature, and like Harry and Ron, she has been primed in a light grey undercoat, but um, you can use any primer you so wish. So I'm going to start with some Russ grey. This is going to be for her jumper. Now I'm applying this with a thin coat. Um, going over the grey, it only really needs the one thin coat, but if you're using a darker primer, then I highly recommend doing two or three thin coats. I'm also going to paint her shoes in this colour also. The next base coat I'm going to do is Mechanicus Standard Grey. So this is going to be for her skirt. Again, I thinned out, I thinned out just a little bit more than the Rust Grey, as this is a base paint, so they're a little bit thicker in pigment, so it just requires to be thinned out just a little bit more. Next up, I'm going to take some bad and black. Again, this is a base paint. So thin it out just a little bit to get a good coverage. And I'm going to paint her tights with this colour. As you can see, it goes on there really nicely. If you have undercoated in black, I still recommend using this colour. So I'm going to take some corn red now. This is going to be for her scarf. So it's quite a large area on the miniature. So just take your time and work your way around. Try not to get any on the skirt and jumper and any other areas you've painted already. Once that step is done, now I'm going to take some Castellan Green and this is for the cover of her book. So of course you could paint the the book in any colour you so wish. I quite like the Castellan green, it sort of gives this old sort of dirty look to it. Now the paint's a bit too thin when I applied it here, so um, off camera I do actually neaten it up. I'm going to take some Ulfur and Grey now for her shirt and for the pages of the book. Now her collar area is quite tricky to paint, so you might want to switch to a smaller brush. Just for perhaps as a video, I just put, do a few dots with that brush, but I do switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to take some Demonette Hide now to base coat the stones on the base. Again, you can use any colour you so wish. I just want to use like this purpley grey. It's a nice alternative, um, as there's quite a lot of grey on the miniature already. Now I'm going to take some Nuln Oil and just wash all these areas that we've already painted. This will really bring out the definition and all the shadows of a miniature. If it pulls up too much in any particular area, as you can see it has done on the scarf there, then just come back and give me a brush and sort of soak some of it up like a sponge. Give us plenty of time to dry and now we can begin sort of highlighting back up. So I'm going to come back in with corn red and just highlight the scarf. So I'm just going to hit all the raised areas. Now thin the corn red out just a little bit. You want it to flow quite nicely and not be too bright once it dries. So it looks quite bright now, but as it dries, that will 
look a lot more subtle and that'll give us a nice little highlight for the scarf. So I'm now going to take some rust grey and this is for her jumper and I'm going to hit quite a lot of the raised areas here again thinning the paint out a little bit more than you would for the base coat it'll flow quite nicely it'll be easier to control as well and it won't dry so light and we leave all the um, darker areas in all the shadows and recesses we can then highlight this further with Fenrisian grey So unlike before, we're going to be a lot more selective where these highlights go, just going to hit the very raised areas of the miniature. Be very select, selective, um, a lot of the creases just sort of doing a few little dots and lines on them. So now I'm going to take some cold grey from Vallejo, um, again as in the previous video I don't have Dawnstone, from just what I would use alternatively. So I'm just using this, and this is to highlight the skirt, and we're doing exactly the same as what we did with her jumper. So just hitting all them raised areas and leaving the dark areas in the recesses, thinning the paint out a little bit more than usual, just so it won't dry as bright, and it's a lot easier to control as well. I'm using a smaller brush here, as you can see, for these highlighting steps as well. So a nice tip on your brush will make these steps a lot easier. Next I'm going to come back with Ulfur and Grey, and this is to lighten up them book pages and her shirt as well. So I'm painting, essentially just painting the pages again, but leaving the darker colour in the recesses. And when it comes to a shirt, I'll paint her collar. And just be very careful, it's easier for me to do this off camera. So i just do a few dots just to show you guys. Next we're going to take Avalanche Sunset, so the um, miniature reference I'm working from, she has a lot of stripes on her scarf and also I'm going to paint her tie as well. So when it comes to doing the stripes, you're as steady hand as possible. I have a little bit too much paint on the brush here and um, the first sort of few stripes don't really come out as nicely as I would like. Um, you can go back in with the corn red if you make any mistakes, but as you can see they're not too great and these first ones. Um, there's a lot of stripes to do so this step will take a little bit of time um, but the end result is quite nice. As you can see she's got several stripes there again some of them could be a bit better but never mind. I also just used some corn red just to do a few dots on her tie. So I'm going to take some strack and green now to highlight her book. Of course um, it depended on what colour you painted your book it would depend on what colour highlight you use here and I'm just going to run an edge highlight just around the cover of the book. Again, to thin the paint out so it won't dry as bright. So I'm going to paint her flesh areas now with Kislev Flesh. This is a nice light flesh colour. It's very important when you paint faces that you do thin the paint and do a couple of thin coats, even on um, a light primed miniature like this. Now it just maintains all the detail. Um, for some reason you can't. I've positioned it so you can't see her face there. But um, we're gonna take some Reukland flesh shade, and just get, just go over the flesh areas. That'll pick out all the fingers quite nicely, and all the detail on her face. Now you will find it'll pull up in the eye, so just sort of come back in with your brush and just sort of suck some of that back up, like a sponge. Otherwise, she'll look like she's got two black eyes, which is not really the effect that we're looking for. So the highlight for this is going to be Flayed One Flesh. So I'm going to paint like her nose, her chin, her cheeks, so her jawline as well. This will, again, this won't dry as bright as it as it goes on. Once that is done, I'm going to take some Dawn Yellow. So I'll, I'll sort of experiment on with the hair here. She has a sort of a sort of gingery sort of browny blonde hair it's quite interesting depending on sort of what era Hermione you paint sort of from the films her hair sort of got a bit darker as the films went on so I thought I'd try something different we've got dawn yellow here but bear with me it won't be this bright and yellow once we're finished so we're gonna start by taking some Agrax Earthshade 
and just apply it over the hair. This will slightly darken that dawn yellow colour and also leave a brown in the recesses. And then I'm going to do Fugon Orange and do exactly the same thing. I apologise that she's a bit out of shot here, um, I'll just bring her down. And this orange will just add that sort of gingery to the hair. So. So I'm quite pleased with the result. The sort of dawn yellow gives us the highlights, and then the two washes give us sort of the brown and orangey colours. I'm gonna take some slanish grey to just highlight the stones. So I just paint a couple of sides on the stone, just sort of give some some illusion that they're sort of raised and they've got sort of highlights on them. Doesn't matter what size sides you pick on the stones, really. This will um, again dry a little bit more subtle, as you can see. It's just a simple little effect there. I'm gonna take some abandoned black now. This is just to do some like text on the book. Now this is really thinned down. I have a little bit too much on the brush, I think, but this is thinned down way more than I would usually. And I just do like some little lines and a few dots. I found that actually doing several small dots actually looks even more like text than the lines do. So it just sort of gives the illusion that there's right on the page. Now if you're not comfortable doing this, you certainly don't have to. As you can see, my end result isn't fantastic, but it sort of gives that, that does give that illusion. Also painted the rim of the base. And then lastly, I'm going to take some Mournfang Brown. And this is just to paint her wand. And with that, she is done. So you could even go one step further and paint her eyes white if you want, but I just left them how they were. I did use a little bit of Avalon Sunset just on her buttons as well. But yeah, I'm really happy with how she came out. So if you liked this video, then please do feel free to give it a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. You can also feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. I'll I want to do some more painting tutorials for this and some games for Harry Potter as well. So all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.